All right, a tough, tough loss. Um, you know, solid opponent. Um, uh, you know, shot ourselves in the foot with the turnovers. Um, similar story now. The first two weeks in that in that case, I'm sure that's been said a lot to you guys now post game, but it, it ought to be. And um, it's difficult to win in this league when you you know lose a turnover battle by one, let alone by the margin we've lost it by. So um, uh, you know, we got to fix those mistakes and uh, not let it continue. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously proud of the way guys fought, um, continue to feel like we have, you know, guys who can make plays and, and be explosive and make this offense go. And, um, you know, Kevin's going to give us a lot of opportunity to do that. So, um, we're going to call a lot of guys numbers and, um, yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say. So take any questions yet. How were you able to overcome a lot of the pressure that they were able to create to still have such an effective passing game overall? Well, yeah, I think it's a combination of, uh, you know, I was still getting, you know, protection to be able to, to get through the progressions. And I think, uh, you know, guys did a good job winning in their man coverage matchups or their match coverages. And, uh, you know, Kevin and the staff did a good job of, uh, you know, getting number one, number two open. So I wasn't having to sit in there too long. And, um, um, you know, just a combination. You know, the, the O line did a good job. You know, mixing up a, the, the snap count, trying to stay disciplined there. And um, you know, there are a lot of moving parts when you go on the road. So, um, you know, outside of the turnovers, felt like we did did a lot of good things. How confounding just is the turnover? Have the turnovers been for you to see so many so early? Yeah, yeah. I think you look at uh, each one as its own entity, and you kind of look at it. Well, why did that one happen? And, and is there a pattern? And in some cases, there isn't. You know, if Justin is going out of bounds at the five-yard line, he's not reaching, right? He's reaching because he thinks he has a chance there on the half-yard line. So um, that one's kind of its own entity. And then you have, you know, uh, the sack fumble where I'm saying, okay, how was that one happening? Well, you know, I got to keep two hands on the ball as, as much as I can. As a passer, it's hard because you're, you know, pulling your hand back. But you know, going back to two hands on the ball as much as possible. So each one is its own entity, and um, and we just have to have to address them each that way. Rick, on the, on the sack ball, it looks like you had to take a couple of hitches there. Mm -hmm. Did you feel the defender coming mm -hmm. around the edge, or did you, was that a surprise? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see him. You know, I guess it's that old blindside, you know, um, term. But, uh, um, yeah. Kirk, why have you and Justin been able to be so productive, even with other teams knowing that he's yeah. you know, Justin Jefferson? Yeah, so so they clearly do the way they, they cover him throughout the game. You know, they're very aware of where he is, and you can feel that and tell that. Um, you know, I think our coaching staff deserves a lot of credit for for being very creative and and uh, uh, intelligent. You know, with how to how to use him, and then um, you know he's he's we try to take advantage based on coverage. So if you know. Sometimes he's not, I can't work him, you know, and I'm, I'm moving on. But there are other times where you say, you know, yes, they're they're aware of him, but I still can can make the throw. So try to take advantage when the when the coverage allows it. Kirk, you talked about in the past Justin's ability to finish plays. Yeah. To see Jordan. Yeah. Uh, make that deep catch and that then finish. Uh, yeah, what great does that line. say about him? It's a great question. Great line. That was the first thing I said to him when he came off the field on the sideline. I, I put my arm around him. I just said. The finish is what I love. You know, you got a six points instead of running out, you know, with our red zone offense. And uh, it's tremendous. You know, if you watch his tape from college, he's catching post routes for Pitt. He's catching post routes for USC. Um, he's good at it. When he first got here, I told him I watched his tape, and that was what I saw. And he said, it's my favorite route. And he said it with a lot lower energy than I just said it now. Um, so uh, he's a very natural receiver. And that's going to show up in the way he runs routes, the way he catches the football, and the way he, um, after the catch, makes plays. Kirk, when KJ was wide open, what happened there? Um, when KJ was wide open, which one are you saying? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, good play design. Good play design. I liked the call uh, all week, and, and it had it on my favorites list. And uh, uh, it was great design. And, they just, um, you know, it's crossing patterns, so they have to decide whether we're going to pass it off or run with it. And I think they, on one side, decided to run with it, and the other side decided to pass it off, and then he, he's able to kind of sneak through. Kirk, you don't want to be saying it after two games in a row, but how do you kind of balance the, the urgency to fix the turnovers and get better with kind of some encouragement from the way your offense has been able to move the ball? Yeah, um, I think you evaluate all football games 
in that light where you say, okay, let's, we don't just look at it with one broad stroke brush and say, oh, we lost, that was bad, or we won and that was good. You know, if anything, you have to avoid it when you win. You know, last year, I think it was a lot of times where we were winning, but you got to go back and be like, this isn't good enough. This isn't sustainable. And so there's a little bit of the opposite too when you lose of saying, hey, I liked what you did here. I liked what you did here. But obviously there's a, uh, you know, need to coach and fix things and, and be hard on ourselves, you know, anytime you lose. Kirk, on the, I mean, you talked about the, the ability to finish with Justin quite a bit too. Like yeah. He was oh, yeah. pretty hard on himself on the sideline yeah. after that fumble. Yeah. Is that kind of one of those where you don't want to dissuade him from doing that, even if it's over yeah. that moment where you Well, you know, you have your, you, you know, when you talk ball security and fundamentals, you always say, you know, hey, don't reach for the end zone unless it's fourth down. And, and, and yet, Players do it all the time and score a touchdown. And so, you know, we often joke that, you know, don't reach for the end zone if you're not going to score. Yeah. Is kind of the is kind of the wink, you know. So, it's tough. And the players are, in, you know, instinctual and in the moment. You know, he's he's so aware of where he is in the field that, you know, he reaches for it. But I'm going to be hard on myself, right? I'm going to say, look, that ball shouldn't have stopped him. You know, the ball stops him, so he has to go up and get it, and then has to pull through. What if I threw a perfect ball? And what if it had dropped right in the bucket? Maybe he runs in untouched. So. Again, going back to, we don't even have to have that moment if I can throw a perfect pass and drop it in the bucket to him, you know. All right, thank you.